So differentiation is great because if you have a graph, the derivative of that graph will tell you the slope at any given point. This point, for example. But the differentiation we've learned so far is limited. You can only find the derivative of explicit functions, y equals something. The derivative equals 2x. But what if it didn't look like that? What if you had something in terms of x and y, some relation, and you wanted to find the derivative of that? Implicit differentiation. Now before I go there, I will tell you there is kind of a way to do the derivative without knowing implicit differentiation. Rearrange it, and then find the derivative down here. Notice this ugly little plus and minus here. Plus will be for the top, and negative will be for the bottom. That's okay, but there is a better way. Implicit differentiation. Now, I'm going to show you the process before I explain how it works. So, anytime you see an x term, just differentiate it, as usual. x squared 2x. Anytime you see a y term, you differentiate it, but then you multiply it by dy dx. Now this is the new bit, and I'll explain it in a minute. This term, differentiated. The derivative of a constant term is zero. And now we just rearrange to get dy dx by itself. So it's still going to be 2y times dy dx, negative 2x, and then uh, dy dx, negative 2x divided by 2y, and that's going to be negative x over y. That is our derivative. And you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, that is not that. But they will give us the same results if we sub in an x and a y value. If we subbed in this x and y point here, whatever it might be, we'll be able to find out the gradient at that point. So for example, if that was point 0.43, the gradient at that point would be negative 4 over 3, negative 1.333 recurring. What about down there? We get the same sort of result by shoving 4 in for x, but we get these like weird pluses and minuses everywhere. Plus and minus there, plus and minus down the bottom. What do we do with all of that nonsense? This is it, implicit differentiation. Now that we've gone through the process, the big question is why? Why this dy dx? with our y term here. And the fast answer is the chain rule. See, think of y squared, think of this y term as a function all by itself. h equals y squared, h just randomly. Now, y, there's a bunch of stuff in y. y is something in terms of x. I can rearrange that equation to make it y equals something. So this y here is actually a function in terms of x, or at least we can think of it that way. And if we can think of it that way, we can say that the derivative of h with respect to x using the chain rule is the derivative of h with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to x. Now, dh dy is just 2y. And this dy dx... I don't know what dy dx is. I didn't bother to rearrange it. I'm just keeping it as dy dx. And this 2y dy dx is what I came up with here. And this is the powerful bit of implicit differentiation. This is where our dy dx comes from. And then we can rearrange to come up with whatever our derivative is. In this case, dy dx equals negative 4 over 3. So let's do some grunt work. Let's do some practice. Uh, the derivative of y cubed will be 3y squared, but that's a y term, so times dy dx equals the derivative of x squared is 2x. And then we rearrange dy dx equals 2x over 3y squared. That's the whole question. Now, if you want to know the slope of this particular relationship or relation, at any point, just sub in the x value and sub in the y value, and you'll know the gradient at that point. And that is different to explicit differentiation, where you just need to sub in the... So next example here, and I'm upping the ante a little bit, 1 plus 2x equals xy. It's this term that's going to cause us trouble. All right, so the derivative of 1, it's constant, so the derivative of 1 is 0. Gone. The derivative of 2x, that's simple, it's just 2. Now, what about the derivative of this? This is a term with an x and a y in it. We can do it, we just need to use the product rule. Now, this is something times something, so we can do u equals x 
the derivative of x is 1. y, y, v is y. But the derivative of y, what is that? Well, it's 1, but it's implicit differentiation that we're doing here. So it needs to be 1 times dy dx, which is just dy dx. And now we get u v dash x dy dx plus v u dash 1 times y, y. Okay, and then I just rearrange this. So it's going to be 2 minus y x dy dx and then dy dx equals 2 minus y over x. There's our derivative. If you put an x value and a y value in there, you'll know the slope or the gradient at that point. All right, last question here, and this one's really just about rearrangement. Uh, the derivative of 0 is 0. The derivative of that, I'll come back to it. The derivative of negative y is negative 1 dy dx. The derivative of that times dy dx. And the derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x. All right, this xy, we did it in the previous example. It's just the product rule. I'm not going to do that again. I already know that it's x dy dx plus y. Okay, so you can see what's happening here. We have a dy dx here, and we have a dy dx here. What are we going to do? Move the dy dx terms to one side. Keep all the other terms on the other side. We get something like this. dy dx minus x dy dx equals y minus 2x. Once we've got that, look here, we have a common factor of dy dx. So we can factorize dy dx times 1 will equal that, dy dx times negative x will equal that. And now to get dy dx by itself, we just divide both sides by 1 minus x. And there we have our answer, dy dx equals y minus 2x over 1 minus x. Now, this one, along with the other three examples, they do have small restrictions here. You should look at the bottom of your fraction and say, right, 1 minus x, what can't x be? This is the derivative as long as x is not equal to 1. Because if x was equal to 1, the denominator would be 0 and it doesn't make any sense. So in those other three examples I've done, we also need that x is greater than or less than something. Uh, in the previous two examples, I think it was 0. Whatever it is, you can't let your denominator be 0. All right, that is implicit differentiation.